Welcome to Door Fortress and welcome to the channel. I'm Twisted Logic. In this video, we are going to be bringing water safely into the fortress and going over water pressure. If you enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments. To start off with, we're going to go to the top right area of the screen next to the mini map and press this button right here display water and magma depth numerically. And now, if we scroll down here, we can see that this water is all 7 7. Water referred to as 7 7 is completely full from floor to ceiling. 1 7 water, the dwarves can walk on and you can build in. And 4 7 of water or higher, the dwarves need to swim. In order to understand this video fully, you're going to need to know the difference between stairs, ramps, channels, and other tile types. So here's an image of that now. About halfway from the beach to the fortress, I'm digging a stairwell down. Just a couple levels there, and then we are going to mine over to the water. So we'll do four wide, like that. And this is going to be the main intake for seawater into the fortress. So we're not breaching this yet. This is going to be the very last step is to breach this. Okay, right about here, I'm going to dig down another stairwell. Five or six levels, just like that. And then I'm going to mine over to the right or left or whichever way you want. And then a stairwell coming back up. And this is going to create a U-pipe like underneath your sink. And we dug this higher than what we needed to. I went all the way back up to the surface. So that way I could show you where the water pressure equalizes. If you have a brook, river, stream, or ocean on the edge of your map here, the edge of the map is all source tiles of water. Um, so just like in Minecraft, a source tile will create water. Um, these tiles here, all of these tiles here are not source blocks, but they are affected by the source blocks on the edge of the map. If this was a river on our map, and we were to block off these tiles right here with the dam, then the water would not be able to flow downstream. The flow of the water is a check to see if the water can move downward, and it checks it as an entire body of water. And if it can move down to the lower Z level, it will. After vertical checks are complete and it can no longer move down, then it will try to move horizontally, and it will flood fill the entire area that it can move to. So when we breach this, the water is going to rush in this way and go down these stairs and then move over and then it's going to pressurize up to prevent monsters, mega beasts and all nasty creatures from getting into the fortress this way. We are going to build a uh, screen here. We're going to build a filter. <laughs> so we're just going to mine over one block Make another stairwell here, up, and then we're going to mine back over here. You can do this with just one tile. Uh, I'm doing it four so because I want more flow and so it's a little easier to see. But now we have this stair right here. This is a downstair and this is a upstair. And that bypasses this section here so the dwarves can still work on either one of these layers without having to use this stair right here. So now that we have this alternate set of stairs in our pipe, we can remove these center stairs. We're going to go to this right here, designate constructed walls, floors, and other constructed tiles to be removed. This also designates all stairwells and ramps. So we're going to designate these four stairwells to be mined out. So there's still going to be open spaces in the floor and in the ceiling and allow water to flow through. Next, we're at our Stoneworkers workshop, and we're going to add a new task. And we're making four rock grates. Uh, excellent, they just finished. So now the downstair remains, but there is no longer an up-downstair here. The tile type has changed from an up-downstair to a downstair. And now we can build grates on top of this. So we're going to go to Build and then Constructions, and then Floor Grate. Excellent. And we're going to have to wait for the others to be made. Now this is going to stop anything from coming into the fortress. 
floor grates can be destroyed by building destroyers, but they have to be on the same Z level as the floor grate. If they're underneath one Z level down, the grate is going to block them from going up, but they can't actually touch it to destroy it because it's on the next Z level. Excellent, all the floor grates are in place, and we also added a door and forbidden all the stone in the area. And now you can see why we needed this stairwell. Now if we just come down here and mine into this, all the dwarves, all our miners are going to drown. So we're going to go to designations and then channel, right? And then come up one level and we're going to channel out these four tiles. Priority one. And now the miners are going to breach this from the top. Excellent, here we go. Now the water sees that it can move horizontally and it is filling up our tunnel. And it's also pushing these stones around. So the two depth of water is going to move across the top of the ones until it finds an empty space and then it's going to fall off and become a one. The one is not going to move and if it doesn't get more water it'll eventually evaporate. Leaving behind mud. Now you can farm on the mud that the water leaves behind. Excellent. Water is starting to fill up the bottom here. Excellent. If I mouse over this grate, it has water 7.7 on it, although you can't see that without looking at the details in the text box. And then up one level, this is now 7.7 as well, and you can see that doors block the passage of water. And this pipe is now pressurized. So whenever the water goes through its first U-pipe, it's going to pressurize one level lower than the source block. Okay, if you imagine this section over here as the ocean, the water is going to go down the U-pipe and back up, and it's going to pressurize equal to one level below its original source. However, if we keep creating U-pipes, it is still going to pressurize to its original source tile. So just like this, the water pressurized to one level below its source level. And the way that we can work with this now is to create a new pressure level for the water. Okay, any level above this grate, so this level here or above on this side only, we can branch off from this. When the water squeezes through a diagonal space like this, that's going to reset pressure to this level. So this is going to be one body of water here, and this is going to be a separate body of water. Okay, we are currently at elevation minus 5, and if we were to mine this tile out right here, the water is going to be able to pass through diagonally. It's still going to be safe because it's at the great level or higher on this side, and this is also going to reset water pressure to this level. Excellent. Now this area is pressurized, and if I come up one Z level, we can see open space here, and it did not flood, even though there's water still here. So this is treated as its own body of water, and this is treated as a separate body of water. So using this technique to reset water pressure, we can create water tunnels everywhere that we need to bring water to in the fortress. Uh, this one can go to an infinite waterfall. This one can go to a power supply for a magma gun or minecart system. This one, we can have a river running through the fortress if we want. This area here can go to a freeze trap if we're on a glacier biome. Okay, I'm just digging out a reservoir here, so that way we can have water over in the fortress. Now, we can pop this diagonally like this. However, we are going to be working on the same level that water pressure is currently set to. So this section is going to be treated as the same body of water, so pressure is not going to reset by this method. Okay, we're going to designate items to be forbidden, and everything in this tunnel. Okay, we're ready to open this up. So dig a channel, and we're just going to dig a channel right here and here. So we're going to dig this channel out here, which is going to open up this wall and allow water very close to our fortress and inside safe. Excellent, the miners have breached this and the water's flowing in. 
So right at the top of this stairwell, I'm going to button this up. So I'm going to go to build, constructions, and then floor. And then we're going to build a stone floor right on top of that stairwell. I already have three tiles built. They're going to build the last one and button it up. So we have salt water coming in. And then once you go up one level on this side, this is now fresh water. On this side, it is salt water. So the U-pipe is removing the salt from the water. The floor grate is going to stop beasts or aquatic creatures from entering the fortress. And then we are bringing the water right over to this area here to our reservoir inside. So up one level from our reservoir here, we're going to dig a channel. Up one level from that, we'll dig another channel. So the bottom part of our reservoir is now filled up. Up one level from that, still filling up. And now we have an open space, a hole in the floor that's looking down into it. Now we're going to go to the build menu. And we're going to go to machines and fluids. And we're going to build a well. And this is going to allow the dwarves to draw water from the reservoir for bucket hauling, for water hauling, for drinking, for the use in the hospital, etc. So we're going to build a well on top of this open space. And this is going to require blocks of any type. It's going to require a bucket. It's going to require a rope or chain. And it's going to require mechanisms. Excellent. Now the well doesn't need to be built directly on top of the water. There could be many Z levels of open space between the well and the water. Now one level up, we're going to build another well on top of that open space because wells can draw water through each other. Now we can go to zones and select water source and highlight this whole area here. So this area here is now a new water source and accept that and do the same thing on the next level up. This is a new water source. Accept. Excellent. This well is operational. I'm going to dig a channel right here and now I'm going to go to build machines and fluids and a screw pump. Now this is going to be pumping from the south to the north and we're going to put that right here. Blocks of any type an enormous corkscrew of any material, and a pipe section or glass tube. Excellent, our screw pump is now complete. Screw pumps in this game work like an Archimedes screw. They have an input and an output. The output tile acts as a wall, and the input tile the dwarves can stand on for manual pumping. And they're going to take water from one level below them, below the input, and they're going to output that water on the same level as the pump. The screw pumps in this game can also be mechanized for automatic use, but we'll get to that in another video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. We're creating a water drain right now, and so we dug a path all the way to the edge of the map. We can't go any further than this, and so we're going to smooth stone the very last tiles here. Excellent, so now this is a smooth mudstone wall, and we are going to carve fortifications here. Carve a gap in a smooth wall that allows archers to fire upon invaders. This is a fortification and we are going to carve these two smooth stone walls into fortifications and this is going to allow water to drain off of the map. Excellent. This is now a mudstone fortification. In this room here we are going to build machines and fluids and a floodgate and we're going to put that right here. Now, floodgates can be built out of stone or wood or metal at a mason shop, metalsmith forge, or carpentry shop. Excellent. That's complete. And now we're going to build machines and fluids again and lever. And we're going to put that lever right here. That's going to require mechanisms. So now we can link the lever. And we're going to click that. And click building to link the mudstone lever to. We're going to select the floodgate. So at the mechanics workshop, we're creating rock mechanisms. And we are linking the floodgate to the lever using mechanisms. The lever is built out of mechanisms. Okay, now we're going to link the door to the lever as well. Excellent. And now you can see the door has, the door's icon has changed, indicating that it is linked with the lever. 
Uh, let's test this by pulling the lever. Now. Excellent. The door opened, and then a few seconds later, the floodgate opened. Let's pull the lever again. And at the screw pump here, we're going to check this start pumping manually. Now a dwarf with a pump operator labor is going to come along and start pumping water. Our reservoir is completely full and pressurized. Now this room is pressurized, and you can see that doors stop the flow of water as well as floodgates. Pull the lever. Excellent. You can see the water is moving a little bit faster under pressure from the screw pump. And if we go down one level and look at it, a lot of water is being drawn up into the pump and out. It draws more than one tile of water at a time. So it can be pretty powerful with even one pump. This is open space right here, but if we wanted to, we can go to the build menu and then constructions and build floor bars on top of the open space. Floor bars are created on site out of any out of any bars of metal. And we're gonna select iron bars. So the pump is gonna be able to draw water through the iron bars. Dwarves are not gonna be able to fall into the water. Now you can see that the water is being drawn through the iron floor bars. And if any of this water was contaminated, salt water or mercury water, uh, sometimes there's contaminant in there. Go, passing through the pump is going to clean that water. Excellent. Now you can see here that the water is being drained off of the map. Okay, and for my final magic trick here, I'm going to dig a small room right next to a cavern lake. Okay. And then underneath this small room, we're going to dig one of the same size and then access tunnels to both top and bottom. And this is kind of an ancient technique. <laughs> Excellent. And now we are going to channel out inside this room down to the lower level, just like this, all around the edges. And one level down, we are going to build constructions and ramp. And we're gonna build ramps all along the edges down here. Build Machines and fluids, lever, and we're going to put a lever right there. The ramps and the channels are dug out, so we're going to go to build, constructions, and bridge. And we're going to make this a retract bridge. And we're going to just paint in that whole room, just like that. Excellent, we're pulling the lever to test it. Excellent, retract bridge works. We're going to pull the lever one more time. Pull it now. And we're going to build a wall right here just like that so that way the dwarves can't access the top of this bridge builder a buck construction complete on the olivine block pillar now if I tell the dwarves to mine just like this they're not going to be able to access the top of this bridge in order to mine but they will be able to access, see it's flashing because the jobs are taken. They're gonna access this underside, stand on the ramp and mine through the bridge to knock out these walls here. See they're all coming down here and the walls are being opened up. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more videos.